So, how much did you pay for gas the last time you fueled up? I know I paid about $5.25 for premium on my last vehicle I work with. Yeah, it stinks, but there is a solution. And you're looking at it. It is the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. And it's Hyundai's latest electric vehicle. And it could be your electric vehicle. More on that later. I'm Randy Stern, behind the camera is George Torline, and this is Victory in Rusia. The Ionic 5 has three levels of performance and driving range. The standard range model offers only 168 horsepower, only good for a 220 mile range. Or you could step up to a 225 horsepower version, offering the maximum advertised range of 302 miles. Our tester is the dual motor model with a motor on each axle. That setup has 320 horsepower, with a maximum range of 256 miles. We observed a range of 226 miles when charged up to 100%. Okay, George, here we are, the 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5. Finally, we got our hands on one to review. Exactly, and I think because the fact that you didn't drive it at the Mama Spring Rally, it's our time to get some good quality time in this car. Yeah, certainly the advantage that we have is having it for a week where we can actually live with it for that period of time to understand what it's like to charge it on a regular basis and what it's like to drive. I think the, you, you said the key term is living with it because when you get these vehicles, you think some of us would test it out and possibly take it out on a speed course or whatnot. No, that's not how we roll here. Uh, well, this is off-road rated, right? No, <laughs> it is not. However, it is a very practical and useful uh, crossover. Cargo space is rated at over 27 cubic feet behind the rear seats. However, if you fold them down, it goes to almost 60 cubic feet. You get that versatility with the hatchback with the fold-down seat, plus the wide opening of the rear hatch, which makes it a very practical, almost SUV-like practicality. Exactly, and not only that, but if you look inside the front compartment, you may think there's an engine underneath, but if you open up the cover, it gives you just shy of a cubic foot of storage space for which the 110 charger is sitting in there right now. Let's talk about some of the, uh, the interior here. I mean, I'll tell you what. Is exactly what I expect from a Hyundai. The two screens on a wide panel here. So you have first screen is mostly instrumentation, vehicle information, as well as giving you the information on what the battery charge is like and also your range. Now, very interesting is that we came out of 100% and Hyundai advertises just over 250 for the all-wheel drive. I'm showing 225 at 98%. For somebody who's you know, have range anxiety, it's kind of a little disappointing maybe. But sometimes you do get more range than what it reports. That is very true, or sometimes less. But again, it's conditions, it's the drive habits, how you're using the vehicle, and yeah, absolutely. The environment, the temperatures, there's right. some variables there. Now, let's talk about the second screen. That is the infotainment screen. And it's one of the issues I have with, with Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis is that when everybody's talking about wireless smartphone integration, when you get to the wide screens in these vehicles, it's wired, it's not wireless. So that's kind of, I wouldn't, it's a nitpick. I apologize, but it's a nitpick nonetheless. One of the uh, options on the limited models is it has wireless charging for your cell phones. It's right underneath here in this very interesting console where it seems like it's uh, detached from the center stack of the, of the interior, but it's its own little module where you have so much storage, not 
storage and, and underneath open storage. And it's just, it, it really gives you more space than say a normal Hyundai. The other thing I appreciate that there's a lot of controls here that are familiar when you've been in Hyundai after Hyundai after Hyundai. And that is, there's so much familiarity in switch gear, except for the transmission. So the transmission looks like it's a column shift. It is not. It's a fixed column where the actuation is from the knob. So of course you flip up for drive, flip down for reverse, and then uh, press P for park. I mean, it's very straightforward, but it's very interesting if you're not familiar with this vehicle. Because your natural inclination is to move the stock up and down rather than twist, right? Exactly. You know, there's not one standard way to shift anymore, which is weird, but that's how it goes. Space, interior space. I mean, the seats are bolstered. I fit pretty good in it. I mean, it's very comfortable. It's very supportive. Uh, the rear seat room is amazing. It's because there's so much headroom, and I'm telling you, headroom. Now, we have the uh, sunshade open, and it's a fixed glass roof. But again, a taller person would have no problem driving this. With the roof line being tall across like this, this kind of a hatchback style almost of roof line, yes, that gives you plenty of headroom in the, front, in the back seat and giving you extra cargo capabilities as well. Not just that leg room, very important because you can fit four adults here quite comfortably inside the Ionic 5. Let's talk about the exterior. Certainly an interesting design. It's really not anything like on the road right now, in my opinion. You have the creases along the side of the vehicle, which give it a very architectural look to it. And it helps, I think, separate visually a little bit some of the weight of the vehicle, where it actually, in pictures, looks much smaller than it physically is. It's much bigger in person. And again, you know, as we pointed out, is that it's got the uh, overall length of a the current Hyundai Tucson with a wheelbase that's close to the Hyundai Palisade. So you have that really interesting mix of dimensions. It is a bigger car than it appears on screen or on paper. Absolutely. And I also want to point out that, you know, for my own eyes, is that I see three elements. I see the past, the present, and the future. The past, meaning that there's a shape to this that reminds me of the Hyundai Pony, especially you folks in Canada, you know what I'm talking about. The present, there's some elements of Hyundai that is familiar, it's so contemporary. However, there's a lot of future to it. The wheels itself, it's a 20 inch alloy wheel and it's big on this tester. So it basically just swallows the entire space. There's also these details, they're very, Interesting details. You have the quad headlamps up, up front, and then of course the square matrix tail lights in the back. Very retro, very 1980s, I would say. However, it's futuristic on top of all that. And again, these details, the lower panels are definitely next level. So while this is a mainstream, quote unquote, affordable electric vehicle, there's still a lot of future shock to it, which is good. It makes a statement where, wherever it goes with its appearance. Some of the chiseled corner parts definitely sets it apart from the old fashioned rounded designs. Well, it's definitely a uh, standout design compared to the rest of the Hyundai lineup right now. And uh, this is going to attract those that are looking for more of a practical EV among the legacy manufacturers that is. One feature I wish that it, or at least would expect it would have, is a rear wiper. Although it does have a louver over the rear window to help channel air over that glass to try to clear it from water. Unfortunately, we have a bright sunny day and haven't had an opportunity to test whether or not that works or not. It's just something I'm used to in the hatchback design. Ah, but you see here, that brings up another issue, the visibility in this thing. It's really good. It's really good. That rear window is not as distorted as, as you would think. It's uh, a good angle, good outward visibility behind. The beers are a good size. The front, the front vision is really good. So I think Hyundai did a very good job of this. 
absolutely. Certainly taking advantage of that uh, design language from uh, SUVs and hatchbacks, but scaling it down just a little bit, not to a economy car size, but to a comfortable size for usability for families as well as individuals. And uh, it's, it's a really nice package. Even if it uh, wasn't electrified, it's a, it's a nice vehicle. I would definitely agree. In our performance checks of interior heated and cooled surfaces using thermal imaging, we found the heating elements in the front seats favored the leading areas of the seat bottoms. The inner seat bottoms near the seat backs seemed to mostly lack heating elements. The front seat backs showed satisfactory heating coverage for the lumbar and middle back areas. For performance from the front ventilated seats, thermal imaging showed excellent coverage with the contact areas on the seat bottoms and back areas. The heated steering wheel indicated good overall heating coverage. We also noted some warmth from the LCD instrument and infotainment screens. Pricing for the 2022 Ionic 5 starts at $39,950 for a SE standard range version. Our limited all-wheel drive tester came with a sticker price of $55,920. Now we know that there's a growing number of electric vehicles that are out there, maybe more than you have ever thought you'd be able to choose from. However, if you're looking for something more practical, something with a bit more room for adults, and a reasonable range, because keep in mind, ranges are gonna go up over time, start with this. Start with the 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5. I think you're gonna really like this vehicle. So if you like the video content we've been doing here on our YouTube channel, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the notification bell to find out when our next video is coming up. If you wanna read all of our great content, randystern.net is your destination to read all the great content on Victory and Reseda. I'm Randy Stern. Behind the camera is George Torline. Thank you for watching.